Come to a kneeling position. Take a moment with your gaze forward to just establish a smooth, steady breathing pattern, rhythm through the nose. Maybe take a moment to notice without moving your gaze off the focal point that you've chosen, just to notice what you can see in your peripheral vision. Notice if that changes any sensations you feel in your body. And then bring your gaze, your awareness, sorry, back to what your eyes are actually focusing on. And just notice. No worries if you don't notice any differences occurring in your body, but above all else, just, you know, remembering that we've got the peripheral vision, kind of what's going on outside of us as well as our focus what's directly in front of us. And we can use both to our advantage. So, moving on, can you bring your forearms down to the mat? And you can have your focus just kind of towards the front of your mat. Tuck the toes under and step back to come into a forearm plank. All right, if you're just not feeling up for a forearm plank, you can keep the knees down. But what we're gonna aim for is to get a little movement going back and forth, squeezing the elbows in towards each other so the serratus is switched on, pressing the chest away from the mat, really protracting through the shoulders as we move back and forth, keeping our gaze on the focal point that we chose. All right, so breathing as you go, hopefully keeping an openness through the hips, not letting the butt poke up too much as well. And yeah, starting to feel like we're challenging ourselves and that's good because we can do things that are difficult, right? All right, so with your weight back towards your feet, can you press into the hands to lift the elbows up to come into a nice long plank? Really squeeze the glutes now and keep your gaze on the focal point that you've chosen and maybe even slide or walk or shimmy the hands away from each other, seeing how long you can make your plank, holding on to that kind of squeezing of the elbows towards each other, that serratus activation, and keeping the hips low, keeping the ribs in, until maybe that happens and you flop down onto the mat. Oh, good job. And this is gonna be uh, a broken record, Adele, but one more time, we're gonna do our prone handstand drill. So with the arms straight up overhead, bring the chin down to the mat, bring the fingers up towards the ceiling, press everything down to the mat, sit bones reaching towards each other, down towards the knees, pulling the ribs in and breathe. Gaze is somewhere forward between looking through the thumbs. And just in case you're wondering why I tell you to put your chin down and I don't have my chin down, it's because it will make the microphone do funny things. Otherwise, I would have my chin down. So you should probably have your chin down if you can. And breathe and hold. Squeeze those glutes, press everything down. One more breath, good. Relax it down, slide the hands back, tuck the toes under and just bring yourself into a kneeling position. Give everything a little shake, and let's just see how much of a difference we can make if we floss now our radial nerve and our muscular cutaneous nerve. So thumb to the palm of the hand. Bring the wrists, first of all, just straight, so not flexion or extension, just straight. Bring the pinky fingers towards the elbows. Bring the arms down by the side. Press the shoulders away from the ears. Internally rotate. So bringing the hands to face to the back wall and then maybe even around. Keep the shoulders pressed down. And then take each ear to each shoulder. Mm, as you breathe. Then can you bring your wrists into flexion and bring the arms a little bit further away from your sides. Keep breathing. Nice and gentle, nice small movements. There's no, there's no achievement in, that comes from pushing. 
in these movements. All right, bring yourself slowly out of that. Give it a good shake out. Let's try our prone handstand one more time. So come back to lie on your belly and just extend long, press the shoulders up to the ears. So the muscular cutaneous nerve helps with that shoulder flexion and the radial nerve helps with wrist extension. So let's just see how it's all helped us. And also get the glutes involved, get the legs involved, point through the toes, every muscle of your body working. Pull the ribs in and breathe. <laughs> All right, slide your way out of that and come into a tabletop position. Tuck the toes under. So a little repeat from our gentle flow this month. We're gonna take it up a notch, all right? So slide the right leg back behind you. And just holding here, can you give me a little cat-cow? So breathing as you go. And I want you to, once you're kind of like, yep, cat-cow, that makes sense. I, I know how to do that in my body now that my, le my right leg is extended back there. Can you take the hip movement out of it and just cat-cow through the thoracic spine? So this is not what the shoulders are doing. So try and hold your shoulders in that protraction. Elbow creases facing forward just as much as possible. The thoracic spine working Ooh, all right now can you slide back to bring the left heel on the left butt cheek onto the left heel and again lowering the elbows down give me a little cat cow just through the thoracic spine here all right you can also wiggle it out maybe move your rib cage from side to side and then when you're ready can you now extend the left arm straight out in front of you maybe gaze at your thumb and can you even lift the right leg keeping the right knee as straight as possible <sighs> pulling the rib cage off of the thigh but keeping the hips low onto the heel oh all these things just making it harder and harder that we're breathing we can do difficult things they're all just temporary Good, slide on out of that, <laughs> tuck the toes under, lift up to a downward facing dog, look towards your hands, <sighs> stretch out through the legs, stretch out through the hips for a moment here, but when you're ready, lift the right leg up, take an inhale, and as you exhale, step it forward, rise up to your crescent lunge. Step into your right leg and bring the left knee up to your chest. And through all these movements, just trying to hold on to all of this, this the stability that we've created with the forearm rocks and that horrible child's pose variation that we just did. <laughs> and establish that stability and hold on to it. Even as you move now, taking the left leg back behind you, little bend in the right knee if you need it, gaze as forward as you lean your chest forward into a warrior three. So, whew. Hardest warrior three variation with the arms straight up overhead. It's difficult, but it's temporary. Just give it your all for this one breath, then bend into the right knee to lower the left leg back down into your crescent lunge. Reach the arms high, squeeze the glutes. You got this. One more inhale. As you exhale, lower the hands and take it back. Right leg back to meet the left, lower the knees down. Give it a little shake. You're doing a great job. All right, you're halfway through more than halfway through actually. All right, so ah, back to your tabletop position and then just slide the left leg all the way to the back, hold the toes down for now. I mean, if you're, if you're really into it, you can lift it up, but keep it down for now. Give me a little cat cow here. So full spine, maybe even getting the head involved, get the shoulders involved, just get all juicy. Again, and then find some stability. Hold your focus on a point on your mat. Find that protraction through the shoulders. Hold the pelvis still, anchor the left foot down, and then try and just bring cat-cow movements into your thoracic spine. So it'll be a very small movement. Okay. Bringing mobility th through the thoracic spine can help us find greater mobility in areas like the shoulders and the hips. 
that we need for handstands and other shapes that we're looking to create, plus just everyday life. It's just good for everyday life. But also helping to understand these slight movements and the difference it creates with what we can do with our rib cage can make all the difference as well. So holding the ribs in, can you just slide the left leg all the way back, getting the right butt onto the right heel, lower the elbows down, gaze is still on the same point, reach the right arm forward. Now can maybe you take your gaze to the right thumb and maybe you can even lift that left leg up. Straighten the left knee if you can. You can also bend it. Can you breathe? Can you pull the ribs off of the right thigh, but keep the right butt down onto the heel? So we've just got all these opposing forces. Trying to lift body parts up that wanna go down, trying to push body parts down that wanna go up. And this creates the stability that we're looking for. All right, rise out of that and just make your way into a downward facing dog. <sighs> Twist it out, shimmy and shake. And then when you're ready, lift the left leg up. Look down at a focal point be between your wrists. Inhale, exhale, step the left foot forward, rise up nice and strong. Find that same level of stability that you've created. Pull the ribs in, open up through the shoulders, wrap the triceps forward, externally rotating. I think about trying to get my armpits to kind of, imagine I'm trying to get them to face each other, like whew. All right, hold on to that as you step into the left foot, bring the right knee to the chest. Make sure that that left knee is as straight as possible. The ribs are still pulling in. You're breathing though. Your focus is on a focal point. Your eyes are not moving as you bring the right leg back behind you and you lean the chest forward. Now you're looking through your hands at that same focal point in your warrior three. You're strong, you're stable. Maybe you're balanced, but that, you're unbalanced, <laughs> but that's okay. That's where you learn. You're breathing. Good, bend into the left knee, step the right foot back, crescent lunge, one more pose here, holding that stable shape, one more inhale. Gaze hasn't moved, exhale. Relax down, all right, lower the hands down. Step it back to your plank, give me one last nice strong plank, and then lower the knees down, tops of the feet, back into your kneeling position, you did it. Now this next bit is gonna feel so easy. I think you'll surprise yourself, all right? So tuck the toes under, rise up to stand, and choose a focal point. So stand right at the very back of your mat, choose a focal point towards the front of your mat. You're gonna go towards a lunge, arm straight up overhead, but before you do anything, find all that stability that we've just established through the shoulders, the arms, all the way down to the toes. And holding on to that, you're gonna go and try a little kick up to handstand, okay? So using momentum, but that opposing force of the momentum with the stability that we've created in our body, using our fingers to press back as if we don't even wanna go into a handstand. Our fingers digging into the mat to stop the momentum. Okay, so three times on the right leg. Give yourself a little break. Give it a, little, a nice little shake and wiggle. Then try it on the left leg. So a little lunge. Find that stability before you even place the hands down, certainly before the legs come up off the mat. Looking at the focal point on your mat, where your hands are gonna go, and then give it a kick. Give it a good amount of momentum, all right? Try it two more times, maybe. You find a handstand. Maybe you're just kicking a little bit. Anything you do is great as long as you are doing it with that stability, with your gaze, with your breath, and with a sense of enjoyment. I think that's important. One more time, if you're with me. A little kick up to handstand. Ah, oh, the warming flow this month. Using the fingers, remember the, that little lesson to help you from falling over. All right, when you've had a little play around with that, oh, you're invited to come back down to a kneeling position and find a sense of 
stillness once again in your body so that you can decide not based on what I tell you, not based on ego, not based on any external expectations, but only based on your intuitive awareness of how you feel right here, right now, what you would like to move on to now, whether it's to do this flow again or move on to something else. 